In this video, we'll explore how to route video sources with a Stream Deck Studio using Scarhoist hardware. So this is a Rack Fusion Live. This is one of our products that is capable of controlling a video switcher on the left side, but also a PC camera on the right side. I've just set it up really quick here. So it controls an ATEM switcher and it has access to some cameras which are currently disconnected. The UI you see here is Reactor and Reactor is the application that runs on the panel. Doesn't require any computer anywhere on the network. It runs on the panel, connects straight to the ATEM. It is uh, set up uh, down here with the cameras, which are currently not connected, but it has the ATEM connection right there. It has also connection to an AJ Kumo and a um, video hub. And what is that? If you are used to our universe, you will see that the video hub connection we have right here goes through another IP address. And that is because we have decided to use another Blue Pill Inside product on the network to connect to the video hub. And by the way, a lot of other things in our showroom, it is actually this one. So you'll see on this one, we have connections to a lot of devices and that includes the video hub here. And for this video, just as a side note, I decided to connect to the video hub through that one. But the main point today is how can we make that Stream Deck Studio do routing on these devices? It does work like this. We add a panel and it will discover the Stream Deck Studio on the network if you have installed the XPanel Stream Deck application on your Blue Pill. Just quick side note to that in packages, which is our software manager, you'll find the application XPanel Stream Deck. Inside of this one, you scroll down, you see that this device is on this IP address, that is the Stream Deck Studio IP address, and this application will convert it into a raw panel device. You can read more about it on our wiki pages. If you type in Stream Deck, you'll learn all about how Stream Deck integration, all models from Stream Deck can be integrated in the Skyhoy universe by conversion to raw panel protocol. And that's what we'll be using today because having this conversion done means that on the homepage, I could search it up on the network and instantly connect it, which is what you're seeing right now. It uh, chooses a default configuration out of the box, which is routing outputs on VMAX, but we are not doing that today. So let's just quickly um, go over to the ATEM. And by just selecting ATEM here, immediately you see the two outputs I have on my ATEM switcher. And for reference, let's just bring up the ATEM software control up here in the top. We have these two auxiliary outputs on the ATEM. And uh, if we stay on the, on the one called screen, you see that there are eight sources here. If I pick camera four, it selects camera four. If I pick panner, it selects panner, et cetera. So that's like routing on an ATEM switcher, right? Let's move on to the video hub. If I just pick another default configuration called Blackmagic Video Hub configuration, then instantly it changes it over to control my video hub. Let me show you how the paging works because of course we have these encoders out here on the side and they can page forth and back even with a little indication on which page you're on, all automated, you know, it just happens for you. And then the same here with my inputs, I have those two pages of inputs. If I want to edit the number of inputs, because my, my video hub is actually a 40 by 40, I have these tables. So we made it easy for you to also manage your sources. They are numbered by one, two, three, four, five, and so forth, but you can actually change them around. So we are currently looking at the input sequence. So let's go to the first page of inputs here. We have those first two. Notice this labeled shelf and shelf two, shelf three. So I just swap around shelf one and two by just dragging and instantly it's updated on the panel. Okay, I can also change colors, which is kind of nice, right? So I am able to paint the colors of my inputs if I want to. Let's move on to the Kumo router from AJ. And again, it's just a matter of picking the right configuration here. It's up there, but before we pick it, just glance at this list. We have 4A routers, Nevion, OptoCore, SWP08, which is catch-all. And those are also available. I could have demonstrated those. But today I'm kind of just showing that the same principle applies for all these. Again, I have a number of router configurations or inputs and outputs that I can set up in a simple table. I can give them other colors if I want. And uh, the same is true for the outputs, of course, look the same. This is why they are blue on the controller here. Now let's pick this first one and then also um, just check the routing again. This is the Kumo web UI. So I'm currently on destination number one, the one we have chosen here. And I am able to route as you would expect. And of course, if I do the routing on the web panel, you'll see that this one is following along as well. A little hidden secret, secret nobody um, 
Hopefully not nobody, but now you know about it is I can press and hold and select multiple outputs. This is like a built-in feature of Reactor. So now I have three outputs and I'm going to route which source. By the way, you can see which sources generally are routed. It says mul in the title, meaning that this is multiple outputs and there are apparently three different. But if I want to route source number nine to all three, just see what happens. Source number nine, source number nine, number nine. But if I pick any of the other outputs, it is, of course, whatever they were at the time. So that's also a little uh, useful feature here. There is a uh, preset function as well. And sometimes they are built in to our application. In this case, they um, and presets is like salvos. So you have salvos in Kuma, but you don't have it in Video Hub. We made that. So if you press this encoder, and press the other encoder that now lights up, you actually access the preset page, okay? So inside the presets, you have a store section, you have a recall section, and in the store section, I'm now going to store on preset number one, the current configuration we have. So if I edit, um, exit this by just pressing one of the encoders, we can now go back and uh, we could select a few um, outputs here like we just did before and route all of that to input number one, okay? And then we can access again our presets and store this on preset number two. All right, let's go, just go check here. So this is as it is. Now, if I go into the menu again and I recall preset number one, and when I go back, you'll see that we are not anymore for these routed to just input number one for those three. They are routed to different things, generally speaking, okay? And then if I go into my presets and I recall preset number two, oh, sorry, yep. Then we actually have for those first four inputs that routing. So that is also a feature that is built inside of Reactor. And again, Reactor is the software that runs on my Bright Fusion Live that currently is the host of this panel. So what is that? Well, it is that all our panels, they usually have connection to themselves. And this is usually how you would see, perceive it. But every one of our panels is also able to connect to other panels, and they will then be managed by those. So this Bright Fusion Live is currently managing the Stream Deck Studio, which in itself doesn't have any intelligence of doing that. And it's quite unique that you have another panel that can do it. So you don't need a computer anywhere in your system to, to do this. And I think a pair like this could actually be quite useful for you. I also want to say that if you don't want to buy a Skyhoy panel, we have the Blue Pill server. And this one doesn't have any buttons itself. So that usually only serves one purpose, and that is running applications like this. Finally, you should know that Skyhoy have great rack panels as well. This is a rack control Uno. We have also a rack fly Uno, which is pure buttons. This is including four encoders and we have a rack control duo that has 12 encoders. So we are all into providing the hardware options you need to have exactly the kind of workflow you are, you are, you're looking for. One very unique panel would be these NKK buttons, the, the you know, extremely high quality Japanese broadcast type buttons that you find on high end switches are also on a rack panel from Skyhoy with a clear OLED display on top. And actually this one is connected to the network as you can see, and I can discover it. It's called Rack Pro 2. And just like you saw with the other one, if I discover this panel online, actually it's kind of probably useful to just see this. So now it connects to the panel. And immediately we see something, right? We see the same we had before. We have this vMix config. And now if I choose to go with the AJA Kumo config, you will see that on this panel, we now have um, actually broken out presets and so on. It's over here on this side. Maybe I should just uh, put it down here on along with the other panel so you can better see it from top. And uh, we are now looking at the page of outputs. We have the inputs here. So I could pick my output, um, whatever it might be. I can pick my input. We can uh, bring up the, the Kumo as well. What was the output? That was output number two. Yes, okay, so this one, and now my input would be routed by the button presses here using those NKK buttons. And we can access presets here, etc. So there's a lot of options in the Skyhoy universe. You can have Stream Deck Studio integrated for whatever you want to do. You can combine it with the Rack Fusion Live that has PTC control, ATEM control. And you can also add in our professional quality rack panels with NKK buttons if you want.